Hi and welcome back to Bike Speed. So this week we're going to deal with this Quintana Roo road bike. It had quite a serious issue on the cabling and front brake area of this bike which we endeavoured to solve and hopefully will make this bike an awful lot easier to ride. As you can see here the cables are rubbing against the caliper. Now you see that wear there, that's actually the cable has worn grooves into the arm of the brake caliper. So this bike would have been very very tricky to ride. The owner of this bike didn't actually bring this in, her husband did, but he had said that she was saying that she gets neck ache with this bike. Now look at this rubbing. Now you imagine if I gave you a brake hose and said rub that on there, forwards and backwards in four different places until you get this groove. You imagine how much energy it would take you to do that. You know, and that energy is what you're using when you're riding. So you're, if you're having a job to hold the steering on this bike square or smooth, you're using all that energy to rub that brake away and it would have no wonder it would have given the rider a stiff neck and neck ache and shoulder ache and also you can see here it wasn't changing gear correctly and you can see why the outer on this was completely chewed up and it just was was you know not right so we measured the chain that's almost 100 percent or one percent over seven inches stretched out which we sort of term 100 percent stretched or worn so we needed to to change the chain and you can see here we had a lot of play in the headset bearings we actually took the headset bearings out we were replacing them anyway but we had to take them out for a bit of our investigation with the cables which we'll explain like I say these cables proved very very tricky in the end but as part of our initial assessment of the bike we're checking things like the bottom bracket bearings checking play in the wheels you can see what i'm doing now i'm just checking everything for play and and fatigue and movement and just sort of weighing up what i need to do to a bike as i go so obviously we need to deal with this rear derailleur cable and the cabling in general on that front brake now you can see how grimy this bike is it's done you know some serious mileages i know the rider of this bike is is a pretty serious triathlete and uh, she'll be riding hundreds of thousands of miles in, in the course of her career and she does many thousands of miles a year so you can see how you get this build up of debris on a on a component and you're pulling your chain through that debris so again you're always losing watts on a bike when it's at the stage like this where it needs a good service now we took off the the chain set and remove the bottom bracket bearing which you can see me doing here because I was expecting to see some kind of access to the bottom bracket area for that front derailleur cable now this front brake this bolt is one always one of the tricky ones on any service that I do it's always clogged up always corroded and often very difficult to remove but in this case we blew that out with an airline and that came off without any problems for us that was quite good and you, again you can see here all the grime on that back brake it builds up and eventually that back brake would stop working completely so you can see here i had no access to this bottom bracket area now this was a real concern for me for cabling because if i just pulled that cable out without any consideration for how i was going to get it back in i could have problems so with this one i was expecting to find a little tube in there but they can sometimes deteriorate and if you pull that cable out you can get into a world of pain because there's no way of getting anything back in there so before I would pull out any cable like that, I needed to investigate this further because it was it was potentially a real problem issue. So obviously as we're taking the bike apart, we've got the headset bearings here, they're absolutely gone. So now we tucked an endoscope down this frame because I wanted to see what was going on in that bottom bracket from the cable and I wanted to make sure there was no corrosion. So I fed this all the way down to the bottom here. This is now heading towards that bottom bracket area and just on the bottom right of that screen, you can see a plastic tube there with another tube inside it. The tube inside it is the carbon tube. It's an outer that you put your tube, your outer cable down. Then it sits in that plastic tube at the bottom. And what I did, I investigated around the corner. You can see it just there, tucked right at the bottom of the screen there. Ignore the little flaky bits there, just debris. There, right there at the bottom. That tube I could see by putting the endoscope down there was all in one piece. So I was happy that I could remove the cable inner and outer that was in the tubing in the frame itself and that i would be able to get in my own cables and outers without causing myself any problems but that was actually the, the biggest concern of this frame was actually being able to get new cables into it because there is that risk of that deterioration so if ever you get a bike that's unusual in its cabling you always want to stick an endoscope down they're not that expensive to buy and you can get them like ours with a little screen it's always just worth looking inside your frame you know on odd, odd occasions for certain jobs so that's what we were doing there so now we've put everything through the ultrasonic cleaner we've got the six litre cleaner with a water soluble degreaser in there 
So we now, everything through the ultrasonic cleaner, then through the wet wash effectively, soapy water to wash off that soluble degreaser so that we've got none of that on there when we actually then re-grease parts because if you've got a degreaser already on there it's going to water down or thin down your new greases and oils to re-lubricate these parts. So we're just using nylon brushes that tends to be my brush of choice on the majority of this kind of work is a little nylon brush and a microfiber towel. Microfiber towels are great they soak up all that water they keep everything nice and fresh and you can wash them through replace them do whatever you're going to do and they're just a great tool in the biking world for cleaning things up and without scratching and damaging so microfiber towels are great so now you can just see here i'm just re-greasing the jockey wheels a little bit of loctite to hold the derailleur together just to make sure that doesn't come undone on the rides copper slip on the threads a little bit of grease on the thumb adjuster there so that this is absolutely ready to go nice thin oil on the pivot points grease on the spring you know we go through everything with a little process which you've seen in other videos and we'll talk you through again in the future you could just catch on that front brake there how it was worn and now all these parts are heading towards being ready to be refitted to the bike and are beginning to look quite nice too so this week's video is sponsored by sports barista coffee to conquer this is a coffee in a bag it's 10 grams of coffee per bag it's designed specifically to slow release its caffeine and they produce a lovely strong coffee over a six hour period it's perfect for your long cycles or long runs or indeed long days at work so you pop this in a cup pour your boiling water on leave this to boil for around about three or four minutes you'll get a cracking taste in strong coffee out of this that like i say releases that caffeine very slowly so we're pleased that sports barista are offering you a discount on their trial packs so use our code bikespeeds50 and go and get your trial pack thanks to sports barista don't forget to check out the link in the description below and try one of these coffees and so now once we've done all the degreasing we're just going to address this headset bearing and put this back together ready for cleaning of the rest of the frame so we just cleaned up the cups a little bit of grease in there fresh bearings that should remove all that play and that again that'll help with that tightness in the in the rider's shoulders with the fresh bearings in there without the play on that that fork where it was just rattling backwards and forwards on itself where the bearings were worn this this whole riding experience once we had all them cables and the bearings here it would just be an absolutely different bike to ride you'll be able to ride this along with no hands you'll be able to have a very light touch on your steering and it will be like i say a completely different bike so we're now going to wash down the frame we're using a cleaner spray then warm soapy water a couple of little degreasing cleaners and odd things along the way microfiber towels you can see that i'm just using a degreaser on the areas that have got a little bit of grease on them before wiping them down microfiber towels wiping it all down big softy brush so it doesn't scratch this is a very soft nylon brush that we use it's almost like a sponge but with bristles so it's a great great bike brush and then we get the old tea cut out and we'll tea cut and polish we just had a little area here where obviously the chain's been dropped at some point we just wanted to check that so we cleaned that up with a bit of tea cut polished it all up nicely and then we just cut a little bit of vinyl just put that over there it will just take your eye off it once everything's back together it's some you know sometimes no point in repainting items where you may have that problem again at some point in the life of the bike so we just put that little bit of vinyl on there just to take your eye off it just to make the bike look that little bit nicer and a little bit fresher as, as it moves forward through its life if you're new to the channel thanks for watching we're pleased you're here subscribers are marching along now we're almost at 10,000 subscribers we originally aimed to get 10,000 by this is now April 2022 and we hope to get to 10,000 subscribers by Christmas of this year so we're way ahead of our expectations and, and growth rate so we're very very pleased that we're nearly there with that on this you just saw there i just put a little bit of grease on this hub before putting the cassette on next week's video the, the wheel that we take apart is in immaculate condition but we had a real job getting the cassette off because it corroded where it had never been lubricated so watch out for that next week having seen that on this week's one we're now going to address all these cables we had to shorten them get them all rooted correctly and it was a, a proper little um, task this we actually just undid the handlebar tape there we didn't actually remove it there was no need to it was okay we could reuse it now this is something about our cables 
You can see here we've got about 1.6, 1.7 cable there. That's the original cable that's just come out of the bike. And then when we measure ours, you can see it's a much thinner wound cable, 1.46 there. So it just, it's what they call super slick. When you run them through your fingers, they feel so much slicker and smoother. And it's not that they've got less strands in them, it's that the strands are wound tighter. So they're pulled tighter, which means they go thinner, which means they go smoother and they just give a lovely shift. We use these cables on all of the road bikes and these sort of high-end bikes. In fact, we use them on everything. I don't even buy the lesser ones anymore. You know, so we'll be fitting these on, on regular mountain bikes, but they are a great cable, especially for this kind of usage. They just give that smoother shift without any jeopardy of, of lifespan because they're just tighter wound. So they're a great stainless steel cable that we use there. So I've fed, fed all the cables through on that left-hand bar now. Now we'll just do this right-hand one and then we redress that handlebar tape there as you saw me do on the other one there and tape that back off. So we're just getting this all nice now. And you can just see by the headset there how these cables are a little bit shorter. They're less stressed or less overstressed, I suppose. And I just put another little bit of vinyl around each corner here. This was more as a frame protector rather than to replace any damage because the cables are now sitting slightly higher. I didn't want to scratch the frame up too much. So I just used those vinyl covers as a little bit of frame, prote uh, frame protector. And now we're putting that poorly front brake on there with the with the war wounds of its uh, previous incorrectly cabled life although mechanically that was absolutely no problem at all so there was you know there's no need to replace it it just we, we just caught it in time now this is a horizontal dropout bike you can see here how i'm moving that wheel backwards and forwards it was because the actual tire you can see here was to the right and was actually rubbing the frame now that was probably not when you were right you can see here under my finger there there's a bit of rub through the paint. That was the tire just catching the frame. It was probably when you were climbing on a bike like this, you'd be swinging the bike and it would be flexing that wheel and it would be probably going sink, sink, sink against the frame as you were climbing. So we adjusted that horizontal dropout so that when you drop the wheel in smoothly, it's in dead in the center of the frame. And then that will stop that, that touching when you're climbing on the bike. So now we're just gradually getting everything back together, put back in the cups for the bottom bracket because like I say, I removed those more for access before I realized it was a, an entire solid shell, tube shell there, so there was no access to the bottom bracket area. So we just get all that chain set and bottom bracket all re-sat back in the bike. You can see it be beginning to come together quite nicely now. And again, I just, you know, little things like this, this, this frame is sort of quite rudimentary in the fact that everything's bolted to, to the frame as well. So even things like that front derailleur mount, I just checked that the bolts on that were also still tight and okay because you don't want that floating around once uh, everything's back together we've got a new chain here so we put that small ring to small ring and size it that way so that we know that the derailleur has got a little bit of spring and flex on it and then we just do a little bit of adjustments on the thumb adjusters because obviously we put the new cables a little bit of b-screw adjustment high low settings etc just to get that shift in really really nice the lovely thing about shimano is you know 105 Altegra durace they're great group sets. They do adjust up nicely. And now we're just beginning to breeze through with the torque wrench. We always go front to back. So the handlebars, stem areas, and the handlebar shifters themselves are all torqued. Things like this cap with the little engraved design on it for Iron Man that this rider is. We align the, the design on that cap. Even that was just slightly off center when the bike come in. It would irritate me if I was riding it along. So we get that all square as well. You can see we're going through all the mounts. Even things like the pinch bolts for cables all have a torque setting. You can actually overdo a pinch bolt on a cable, cause that cable to start fraying and, and you know break the strands within that cable if you over tighten it. Likewise, if you under tighten it, it can come loose. So they're even, every single pinch bolt for all your cables all has a torque wrench setting. You know, it's important to learn those and to gradually work through your bike. So once we've talked everything up, pump up the tires. And as you can see from these before and after shots, what a difference we've made to this bike. So thanks for watching. Thanks especially to Sports Barista. Don't forget our discount code BIKESPEEDS50 for your trial pack. They're a great, great coffee company and uh, we hope you'll start using them once again. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again next week.